Okay, just getting logged on here. And looks like it's recording. Audio is on. Awesome. How's everybody today? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So much cooler today. There's actually a little breeze at the ranch. It is warm in the sun, but I put my umbrella up so we can sit in the garden today. And then you walk you around the garden. The garden has been just flourishing. Um, these are lavender plants with lots of pollinators on them and busy little bees. See the bee right there? doing their jobs. Butterfly bush is going to be a two-story bush soon. And the mandevilla. I sprayed all the rosemary a couple times this week because we've been having white flies. Not quite as many. They actually resemble little tiny white moths. And in the evening they are abundant on the rosemary. So I sprayed all the rosemary, actually sprayed everything in the garden with neem oil. They like the salvia too. See how they fly out, those little white bugs. So they have to be done to break the life cycle of the pest, the little white fly. Eventually, if you get enough of them, they can damage the plant structure. Rosemary is pretty hardy, but I still want to keep them down in the garden. So I haven't seen very many um, pests on the citrus trees. Last year we had a uh, psyllid. This looks like some kind of pest here. Um, that could be eggs of butterfly. That's a tiny little um, ladybug right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, that little tiny little beetle. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about beneficial insects, specifically the ladybug. I released some ladybugs two weeks ago into the garden. And we haven't had any real big pest problems this year, but it's a good idea in the spring when you start seeing a lot of ants, especially I see ants usually around the citrus trees in the dirt here. And the ants left unattended like to crawl up the trunks and they eat the sap that's left by the aphids that um, are leaving their little residue. So where there are ants, ants are usually going for the aphids. The aphids are what ladybugs love to eat. So as a natural way to control pests in your garden, you can go to the hardware store or you can go to your garden store and you can purchase a few hundred ladybugs and release them at dusk and they will stay on your plant and gobble up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of aphids for you. So you don't have to spray as much you could just do a little bit of neem oil. The neem oil doesn't hurt the ladybugs because they're not soft shell. They have a hard shell around them. So, or a, what do they call that? I think it's called chitlin. It's a hard, horny substance that protects beetles <clears throat> from um, things that could suffocate them, like the little pests that we call bugs. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about the difference there's the fig tree. Look at all the figs are coming on. This is a Celeste fig. Just checking to see what things are going on here. So um, we're going to discuss the difference between bugs and beetles. And did you know that there is a difference? Oftentimes we say, oh, ladybugs, but ladybugs are really a beetle. And the, the word ladybug has a history. I was looking it up. Um, in Europe, they had a really bad year where it was um, 
the crops were getting damaged and it was a horrible time and the farmers were really worried that they were gonna lose their crops. So they, being Catholic or Protestant, um, were praying and they were praying that God would send something to help them and the lady beetle showed up and the farmers thought that the lady beetle looked like lady bird which was um this the story is that it looked like uh, the virgin mary because she wore a red cloak with black on it so the farmers thought because this beetle showed up that it was a sign from god and that's how the lady bug started a long time ago being called the lady bird beetle so there is a difference between ladybugs and other bugs. So the difference is in the way that their mouth is shaped and we'll go over this. I have a little slideshow that's kind of helpful to see um, for me anyway. And I'll connect to that and we'll go through a little bit about it. Uh oh, it's setting me out. Okay. So let's see. Sorry, I have to sign back in here quickly. Here we go. So ladybugs are loved around the world. And they really are. I mean, when I was looking it up, basically all over the world, in different countries, no matter where you go, Turkey, Africa, lady term that people use. They love them. They know that they're beneficial insects in the garden. They help gardeners, uh, whether you're farming for with fruits and vegetables or whether you just have a beautiful healing garden like we have at the ranch here. They do so much work. They're a gardener's best friend. So I wrote up a little bit about the differences. So bugs and beetles are not the same but they're both in the insect family. So you have all these different insects and beetles are one and bees are another type and um, butterflies are another type and then all of them are under the umbrella of being insects. So usually insects have six jointed legs that you can see right here in the diagram. And in the case of ladybugs, inside these jointed legs, there's a really uh, pungent liquid. And when predators eat them, they get that pungent liquid and they don't like it. So they remember, and they remember what a ladybug looks like with its red and its black dots, which are supposed to be like eyes. Predator sees it and they go, oh, that thing has eyes, I'm gonna stay away. Well, if they make, make a mistake and eat it, then they're gonna get a yucky mouthful of bitter stuff. So the anatomy of the beetle is they have an exoskeleton. So this is what protects them, this chitlin, this outer shell. And underneath the shell of the chitlin, they have a, um, a pair of soft membranous wings that fold up in the case of a ladybug. They, if you look online, you can actually Google or look on YouTube. And the ladybug wings, the soft ones, they unfold out and then they go back and then the ladybug can actually gather the wings from the back end, tuck it and fold, tuck and fold, tuck and fold, and get them all the way back under her hard shelled wings, which are these right here. And it's a really fascinating little video because they show it in slow motion. Um, and so the other parts are hard wings out here, and then the membranous ones, which are actually their flying wings. And they have a body, and the body consists of a head, a thorax, which is this middle section, and then the abdomen, which is down here. And many insects, including ladybugs, are omnivores, which we know what omnivores are, right? They eat uh, other insects. Omnivores eat plant, and uh, uh, in this case, it's going to be an insect. And um, so you'll find that they can eat aphids or mealybugs or um, scale or any type of other insect that's a pest in your garden. Ladybugs will gobble that up. If they um, don't have access to pests, they'll also eat the nectar or the pollen from flowers. So they can survive on those two things as well. And beetles undergo complete metamorphosis with a larva, which is often referred to as a grub. You've seen those sometimes. They're um, sometimes found in the garden. They look like little fat white things. 
and they usually have a hard head and that's the um, part of the metamorphosis before it takes its final adult stage um, and it will pupate into an adult. Bugs, on the other hand, they don't have a complete metamorphosis, which means that the babies are born like small adults. So they don't go through that process of where they're a larva and then change into an adult. Another way to tell the difference between bugs and beetles are their wings. So beetles have this hard chitlin, which is this outside shell covering, and um, they also have soft membranous. I made an error here, I think, in the PowerPoint, but I'll correct it. Um, the wings, and they're also a V-shaped covering. So underneath that, if you look at a beetle and a bug side by side, you'll see this hard chitlin on a, on a beetle, but on a bug, you'll see a V shape and the chitlin is not completely down. It doesn't go all the way to the end of the body, the abdomen here. It would make more like a, a triangle right here. So that's the difference with their wings. And the life cycle of a ladybug. So it's really interesting. Here's the eggs, the picture of the eggs that are laid. It's anywhere from a few to a few dozen. And the ladybugs grow and change through a transformation called the metamorphosis. Once the eggs hatch after three or four days, they, the ladybugs will lay the eggs nearby aphids or scale or something where as soon as this larva is hatched out of the egg, it'll immediately have that food source, which is really smart. And if, um, if you see this type of bug, it looks pretty creepy and it looks like a pest in the garden, but it's actually a baby. You see that it looks like it has little horns on it and it's usually two different colors and um, it doesn't look very friendly. I would, don't think I'd want to pick it up, but now that I know what it looks like, I'm going to be, keep my eyes out because I'm going to hope to see more of them. And then once it goes through the larval stage, where it's eating, 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 it changes into this little, it's almost like a cocoon, but in insects, they call it a larval stage. And that's after, um, I'm sorry, a pupa. And then it stays that way for a few days. And then once it's um, complete, it transforms into this completed beetle, which we know as the ladybug. And in North America, these ladybugs have seven spots, but there are different varieties that you can look online and they've got many spots and some have very few spots. Some of them are orange, some of them are yellow, some of them um, are yellow without any spots. Uh, sometimes you can um, read about ladybugs being a nuisance, which means that they become kind of a problem when in certain seasons there's a lot of them, and so they kind of overpopulate the garden. Um, so here's another picture of the baby ladybug to give you a better idea. Peace. Can you see him over there? He's there in the chickens. Yeah. Ooh, all the fog is moving in. How interesting. All right, let's go on to the next slide. So ladybugs have really special wings. So since a beetle um, has this elytra, which protects its hind wings, it also has these interesting breathing pores beneath them. And beetles are able to live in almost any environment because of this factor. The elytra enables them to control their body temperature and also retain more water. So it, this is why beetles all around the world make up two thirds of all insects because they can easily adapt to the environment where they're in and um, it's a fascinating uh, accommodation that they have. So here you see this hard shell called the elytra. It's made of a chitlin horny substance and then underneath that you have those pores that they were talking about. It's pretty fascinating. So how do bugs and beetles differ? So bugs eat a liquid diet of nectar, sap, or any animal fluid, and they can get this with these piercing, sucking mouth parts. So they have a different mouth part. Um, it's like a beak and it can pierce things. In a butterfly, you'll see the, the pro proboscis, um, and it has a little like extender tube that comes out and it'll suck the nectar up. Um, and cicadas do a different type of um, eating. Some insects actually have both. Some do chewing and sucking. Some can, can do one or the other, and then some of them can do both. So it depends on the specifics. You have to look them up. Um, but ladybugs have a chewing mechanism in their mouth part versus a sucking mechanism. And I think bees have, I want to say both. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think bees have both. 
So it's really interesting depending on what their food source is. And beetles process um, food by chewing it up in their mouth parts so they can eat anything from hardwood to rotting fungi to much harder surfaces and um, substances than a bug can. So think about a bug like a mosquito. When a mosquito bites you, it's sucking, you know, the blood out of your system. Or um, a butterfly would be another one that has a sucking mechanism. And um, trying to think of some other ones, housefly. So you would have the difference between a bug and a beetle are those basic premises in the structure of their wings. So ladybugs are a gardener's friend. And we talked about why. So you have here on this lower picture, this is called scale. And these little pests cling to the trunks and the stems in what looks like a scaly pattern. And these ladybugs will come in and they'll lay eggs right nearby. And then the eggs will hatch. And then those larvae will start to gobble up all these little bugs. And this one is, the one next to it is a mealybug. These that look kind of like prehistoric. And then if you see anything like little red dots clustered together, those are usually spider mites. And you'll oftentimes see little webs that are uh, next to them. So these are three different pests that the ladybug can help you with. If you're having trouble in your garden and you really want to reduce the use of pesticides, go to your garden store and grab a little container of ladybugs. They're not expensive. It's really fun to put in your garden. The best time to um, put them out is in the late afternoon, dusk. If you take them from the refrigerator, they'll be cold and they'll be slow. Mist down your plants so that when the ladybugs awaken, they'll have water and they're more likely to stick around and stay in your garden for a period of time and probably some eggs. If you have a really infested plant, put them right on that plant and they'll go to work. And ladybugs have um, different coloration. They can have lots of spots like I was telling you, or they can have very few spots and some of them don't have any spots. So the typical North American ladybug is the one that has seven dots. And the, there's even some that are like completely dotted up. I think the Asian ladybug is one of them. And isn't that interesting? Look at their little wings, how they're flying. Ladybugs, I told you, can be purchased at the hardware store or garden center. And if you release them at night, they're more likely to stay around. So here's what they come in. They come in like a little medium in usually a plastic jar. And you can take them out, put them right on your hand, or you can take them out and put them near a plant and just set this material down and they'll migrate onto your plant. <coughs> And if you're really interested in bugs, you might be curious to look up how to become an entomologist, which is a scientist who studies insects. And they have all sorts of different categories of entomologists based on what specific type of insect you want to study. So an entomologist kind of covers all of them, but then if you wanted to study bees, that's a different type of name. And I can't remember all of them, but you'd be doing work um, classifying new insects, for instance, or studying about how pests could be controlled in agriculture and how farmers could be helped with our food supply. Um, might work in a chemical industry where you're, you're working on some natural form of pest control or uh, the forest service tree, identifying what's going on with the trees and what kind of insect is maybe hurting the trees in a particular area. So an entomologist would work indoor at a lab and also outdoor collecting samples. So it can be interesting, fun, uh, probably new. I think some of the things that That's nice. I lost ya. Hmm. Let me see. 